Well, good evening and welcome back to Elmarva. Artificial intelligence or AI is a field that, well, it's constantly growing and the technology is becoming increasingly accessible for the average person. And while it can be used as a tool to help work more efficiently, Delaware lawmakers have introduced a bill to protect people for when this technology could potentially fall into the wrong hands. 47 ABC's Chris Brunk has the details. It can be hard to browse social media without finding some sort of content that was generated by artificial intelligence. A common type of AI imagery is what's called a deep fake, where someone's face is placed on another person's body. This can create problems when the technology is used for unsavory purposes. We have seen it in Delaware happening to children where um, their faces are put on the images of other bodies engaging in sexual conduct. And then those images are spread. Delaware Representative Krista Griffith is the primary sponsor of House Bill 353, building on existing laws that deal with the unauthorized distribution of intimate images, expanding the legislation to include synthetic images as well as real ones. Addressing um, the emerging issue of uh, bad actors manipulating media by placing um, images of individuals out there without their permission engaging in sexual conduct. To have the state officially recognize deepfake images as an issue, it will give people real legal avenues for recourse, where before there weren't. It addresses that both in a criminal context and a civil context, so there are criminal penalties and civil remedies if someone is a victim of that. Chris Brunk, 47 ABC, WMDT. Yeah, Representative Griffith is also the primary sponsor of another bill, House Bill 333, separate legislation that would establish a state commission looking more broadly at the use of AI. Both bills are currently out of committee and awaiting debate on the House floor. Well, we have an update on a fatal crash that we told you about last night in Salisbury. That crash occurred just before 530 in the evening when a motorcycle hit a van near the 900 block of South Salisbury Boulevard. The driver of that motorcycle, 22 year old Ethan Smith of Mardella Springs, died in the crash. The other driver was treated for non life threatening injuries. Salisbury police are still investigating. If you have any information, you are urged to call 410 548 83165. Well, April is National Minority Health Month and advocacy groups have been hosting events to educate the community. The Division of Health and Human Services sponsoring a health equity summit this week in Dover. The conference focuses on LGBTQ plus health equity, but also discusses disparities affecting age, race and ethnicity. David Marin, our executive director of Sussex Pride, says while the conference is great, some folks might not even be aware that it took place or even be able to go for that matter due to funding. To be honest, I don't know of many LGBTQ folks that are going to that conference because there aren't many LGBTQ organizations that are funded to do health work here in Delaware, and that needs to change. Yeah, that conference took place today. Assistant Secretary of Health Admiral Rachel L. Levine, who has gone on record for speaking out against health disparities affecting that community, was a guest speaker at the summit. Officials say the event brought a positive end to LGBTQ plus health week. And at this time, we're going to throw things over to our chief meteorologist, Rich Wurzik, who's standing by. Rich, what's our weekend going to look like? Our weekend, uh, most of it, Rob, is going to look good. Uh, we have a couple issues expected tomorrow morning with some showers moving in. I expect those to be gone by mid and uh, late morning in the far south, and we'll get into some afternoon sun. And then the story is going to be more about the cooler temperatures waking up to near 40 Sunday morning. Probably don't get back to 60 in most places Sunday afternoon. Could have a few showers popping back up south of Salisbury late Sunday. But again, most of the weekend after the morning tomorrow will end up being dry. Our zoo stampede 5K forecast. Uh, it looks like scattered showers around at 7 a.m. Lesser amounts 9 and 10 o'clock. And I know race time is going to be in there uh, in that time period there. But at least temperatures are going to be good for that run. You just might have a little bit of wet weather to contend with. I don't think it's me anything to keep the race from happening, though. We're not talking about heavy rain at all. Rehoboth Beach today was a gloomy scene, although the blooms are still nice to look at out of Sussex County. That's where meteorologist Eric Alf was earlier today. Uh, late afternoon specifically near the uh, news hour time as the temperature was about 50 out there and that's where it was hanging out all evening with that east breeze and a little further up in Delmarva same scene in the background nice blooms in the foreground that's from Nas Nancy Kastner.
who had a nice day still looking at some of the flowers and the budding across the area out of Lincoln. Today we hit 61 for the high, but with that breeze coming in from the east, it never felt like 61. It always felt like the 50s and 40s with the wind chill. Our average is now 68, getting close to that 70 degree mark for expectations for late April uh, weather here. Live in Georgetown, a quieter evening. The winds have backed off. Shore Auto Sales Skycam is what we were looking at there. So let's talk about with the breeze, a light breeze through the night. Uh, that won't pick up much tomorrow, even with a cold front that'll be coming through. Currently, we sit in the low 50s. Speaking of the cold front, there it is there off to the west. Back in the mountains, you see scattered showers. Note in the radar picture, nothing that is considered uh, organized, if you will. Probably won't even have any thunder with any of this that comes through. And no deep moisture to tap into from the south. And the front uh, will make its way through, only producing scattered showers. There's 6 a.m., 9 a.m. Notice how quickly these leave the coast here by lunchtime. It might take a little longer for the clouds to move out. So, so that kind of gloomy sky through early afternoon. But I do think uh, we get into a fair amount of sun for the later afternoon. 46 to 51 here for tonight. A passing shower possible, but they're going to be more toward daybreak as you saw on Futurecast. Tomorrow, the early morning showers will give way to a partly sunny afternoon with high temperatures uh, ranging in the mid 60s to upper 60s in a few of our warmer spots, but just a couple degrees below average. Same idea as we go into Sunday, I'll be a cooler. We start the warming trend quickly into early next week. Mid 50, mid 60s on Monday, lots of sun. In fact, a pretty decent afternoons. So the exceptional Wednesday, we'll have some showers around. That's going to be the warmest day of the seven day forecast. Noting that nighttime temperatures will be in the 40s. I still don't see any possibility for any widespread frost. Uh, thinking about our plants out there, but we'll have to watch some of those nights if we have a clear enough sky. But uh, we are warming up by the end of next week into the mid 60s. We have more DSI coming up on the other side of the break. Stay with us.